Hi there. You're probably watching this video because you're taking wheel throwing here at Juniata. My name is Max. And I'm a senior enrolled in the wheel throwing course. First of all, I would just like to say congratulations. It's scientifically proven that there's no better way to spend your time than by making pots. If this is your first time being exposed to the wonderful world of ceramics, I was once in your shoes. I'm actually only a couple months ahead of where you are right now. I'm going to share with you all the tips and tricks that I learned when I was completing the bowl assignment with the hope of helping you grow the innate artistic creativity that you have within yourself. And personally, I can't name a better way to do that than with clay. First, let's meet your professor. My name is Bethany Benson Burns. Bethany is going to be helping me throughout this video to teach you. But before we get started, you should know a few things. So, clay. Clay is amazing because of its plasticity. It's this unique property that allows clay to be molded into literally any shape you want. No one in the history of ever has held clay without feeling the irresistible urge to squeeze and play with it. It's a material that begs exploration. Vince Patelka, a veteran ceramicist and educator, called clay the most flexible and giving of art media. And as far as I'm concerned, he was right. Clay undergoes quite the metamorphosis during the wheel throwing process. It starts out in the wet or workable stage. Then, after it's wedged and thrown, it becomes greenware and enters the leather hard stage. There are multiple stages to the leather hard stage. You have soft leather hard, medium leather hard, and hard leather hard. This pot that I'm holding right now is somewhat in the medium to hard leather hard stage, so it's ready to be trimmed soon. You can see that the foot flakes away and can be broken off. This stage is incredibly important because the clay has rigidity, but it's still damp, so the potter can make cool alterations during this stage. Then, once the clay body has dried completely, it becomes bone dry. This is the most delicate of the greenware stages. The clay becomes incredibly brittle, meaning it's very prone to cracking. So when you put your stuff down on your racks, do it gently. Once it's at this stage, it's ready for the initial firing, where it's turned into bisqueware. Bisqueware is vitrified, so it has been turned slightly into stone, and this gives it strength. At this stage, you're also able to apply glazes, which is what makes pots look so pretty. Once glaze has been applied to the bisqueware, then you can put it in the kiln for the final firing and turn it into pottery. This is where you can sometimes get the beautiful product that you have been envisioning throughout the whole process. Now that we got vocabulary out of the way, let's get into some demo, the fun stuff. First up is wedging. So according to Professor Benson, wedging is the first most important process of any uh, making anything out of clay, whether it's hand built or wheel thrown. Wedging is the process of removing air bubbles from your clay and homogenizing it, which increases the structural integrity of your vessel. Air bubbles in your vessel can hold moisture, which can lead to explosions in the kiln when it's being fired. Not only will this obliterate your piece, but it'll probably obliterate the pieces around it too. Throughout human history, we've come up with so many different ways to wedge clay, but all you need to worry about for this course is the boar's head technique. The boar's head technique is called that because when you're wedging, it kind of resembles a boar's head, very roughly. You want to start with your body square to the ball of clay that you want to wedge. This process takes a lot of muscle, so you want to be able to use as much of your upper body as possible. It just makes it easier. So once you have your, your ball of clay and a rough spear in front of you, you want to place your hands on either side of the clay. Then you roll the clay up onto its nose 
and push forward and down, leaving an indent in the clay. After this, you pick it up with your fingers and press again once more, forward and down, just like you did before. Through the process of repeating these steps, you stretch out the clay and pop any air bubbles that are stuck within it. You have to repeat this process 50 to 75 times before it can be called thoroughly wedged. Once you've wedged 50 to 75 times, you roll the clay up onto its nose and then roll it out into a rough sphere. Once you have a rough spear, now comes the fun part. You just slap the clay into the nicest sphere that you can make. Rotating it in your hands and creating an evenish surface. Like that. Once you have your wedged balls of clay, it's time to get into centering. But before we get into that, it's important that you have good body mechanics. You're going to be leaning over the wheel, so maintaining good posture is important to protecting your spine. One of the easiest ways to do that is to pop your booty and keep your back straight. Centering is the easier said than done process of getting your ball of clay in the dead center of your wheel. Centering well is absolutely vital to producing vessels that are evenly round. To start, you want to grab your clay and place it firmly in the center of your wheel. Doing this firmly helps the clay get stuck to the wheel, which is very important because you don't want it to be slipping around on top of the wheel. It'll be very hard to work with. Also, it helps to try and get the clay as close to the center as possible. It means that you have to do less work. So once you have your clay on the wheel head, it's time to get into it. The things you need for this process are a big bucket of water, like this, and a sponge. During centering, you want your, your wheel head to be spinning pretty fast, but not pedal to the metal fast. So after you have water on your clay, I like to place the sponge in the palm of my hand and anchor my elbows on my thighs. Doing this is also incredibly important because it means that you will be moving the clay instead of the clay moving you. The number one mistake when people are centering is having their arms out in the air like this. We call those chicken arms and you don't want chicken arms. So the first thing you want to do is place your hands on the clay. Whenever you're touching the clay during the wheel throwing process, you want to make sure that as much of your hands are on the clay as possible. And this is where keeping your arms anchored on your thighs is really important. You want to start by creating a flat surface with your fingertips and your hands in general. With your sponge in the palm of your hand, you want to press into your clay. With both hands, equally. As you can see, the top part of the clay is getting closer to be centered. The bottom part of the clay uh, has a little bit of what we like to call a skirt. And getting rid of the skirt is important because if your hands are constantly on the skirt, you'll see that they just keep moving. And it's impossible to center your clay when your hands are moving like this all the time. So you want to get water and press the bottom of your hands on the wheel and inwards to the skirt. And as you push inwards with the clay, the clay goes upwards. You'll see this wiggle happen as you pull upwards and you just want to keep pulling till you get rid of that wiggle. This is called coning up for obvious reasons. So you obviously cannot throw like this. 
The next step of this process is pushing the cone down. So what I like to do is I like to anchor my left arm and push with the palm of my right hand downwards. Your left hand is important in this process because it determines the width of your clay at this point. And as you can see, I'm still not centered. The coning up and coning down process takes a couple of times. I went a little bit high with that first cone. You don't have to go that high. After you've done your coning up and coning down, you want to try and make your clay look somewhat like a hockey puck, a rough hockey puck. There are a lot of different ways and different preferences that people have um, about what it should look like at this stage, but the most important thing is that it's centered. And you can tell it's centered when you look at it and there's no aberration in the X or Y direction when you're looking from the top down. Once you have your clay centered, the next step is opening it up. The purpose of this process is to make a bowl. So we want to keep that in mind throughout the entire pulling process. What I like to do when I'm starting a bowl is flatten out the top a little bit. At this point, you push in to the center of the clay. Something that, that you have to keep in mind is that you have to keep the opening centered along with the exterior of the clay body. But as long as you go slow, you won't run into too many issues. So I like to press down until there is roughly three quarters of an inch of clay at the bottom of this opening. One of the ways that you can check this is by grabbing your pin tool which looks like this, and putting it down there in the center and pulling out. I still have some room here to push down into the, into the clay. That feels good. So when you're making a bowl, one of the most important things is the interior curvature of the bowl. The best bowls will have a very smooth interior curvature going from almost flat and then exponentially rising in slope as you go up the wall of the bowl. There are a lot of different ways that you can hold your hands at this point. I like to hold them like this so that the action is happening in between these two fingers and my thumb on the exterior wall. As you can see, I still have both hands on the clay body. So at this point, I want to start dragging my fingers, my two interior fingers, outwards towards the wall. And you can see as I start to do that, the clay is changing. When you're pulling, you have to make sure that all the pressure you're putting is happening on small surface areas. Doing the pressure on small surface areas means that you don't have to apply as much force. And this allows you to, to control the pulling process. So as I pull up and out, at every pull, I'm rolling my fingers over the rim. If you don't roll your fingers over the rim in the beginning process, one thing you might get is a very cracked looking rim. The first ball I ever pulled had a very cracked rim because I wasn't doing this step. At this point, I'm deciding that I would like to increase the height of the ball. So what I'm going to do is apply downward pressure with my middle two fingers and inward pressure on the wall of the bowl. When I apply even inward pressure with both my middle fingers and my thumb on the exterior wall, the height of the bowl increases. What you can notice is these pulling lines. These are the lines that are created on the vessel as I pull up and create this wall. You want to have thin, tight pulling lines.
sides because that means that the wall of your vessel is even. So I'm gonna continue this process, just applying a little bit of pressure during each pull. A bowl is starting to take shape. You'll start to notice that I have a lot of material left here at the base of the bowl. This is done intentionally to support it on the wheel head while the clay is still wet. So I think I'm at the point where I'm satisfied with how this bowl is looking. In order to remove the bowl from the wheel, you need this funky looking tool. This is your wire cutting tool. With your wire cutting tool, I like to wrap it around my fingers like this and put my thumbs like this so I create a strong straight line. You take this strong straight line, press it down onto your wheel head and drag it underneath your vessel. Once you do this, you can lift your bowl from the wheel head. Like that. As you can see, during the removal process, the bowl got warped a little bit. And this is okay. Because it's so malleable at this stage, you can kind of work your, your hands underneath it and even it out. You wanna avoid playing with the rim too much, but sometimes that's what you need to do to straighten it out. There are a few spots that are a little bit wonky still, but as this dries, I'll be able to fix those little wonky pieces. So, now that you've successfully pulled your first bowl, the next step in this fun process is trimming. Trimming is what takes this ugly piece off the bowl. Gives you a nice, pretty foot. So, I'm sorry to break it to you, but we're gonna have to do some more centering for this part too. Getting a nice, evenly trimmed foot can only happen when your bowl is properly centered on your wheel head. There are a few ways to go about doing that. First of all, whenever you're trimming the foot, you have to flip the vessel over on its, on its rim. And this is another reason why it's so important that it's leather hard, so that it doesn't just crumble when I do that. I like to do my best at centering it by using the concentric rings that are on most of your wheel heads and just making sure that it, the bowl is kind of, is just as equidistant from these lines as possible. So once you think you've got a good center from just your bare eye. One of the ways you can do it is by using your pin tool. So, if you keep your elbow fixed on your thigh and hold your pin tool to the side, you'll be able to see how well centered it is. And on my first attempt, I actually got pretty lucky. It looks like it's well centered. But if, for example, you had it slightly off to the center, and you held the pin tool to the clay body, you can see that the pin tool is dragging and then pulling away from the vessel. It's okay that you're doing this because you're gonna trim away all of this stuff anyways. So whatever side has the pin tool marks in it is the side that you want to push in the opposite direction of. So I've got a deep mark over here. I'm going to push it slightly in this direction and try again. Still happening a little bit. So I'm going to push the vessel this way. We'll see if it fixes it. That looks good. Once you have your pin tool dragging on the vessel throughout the entire revolution, that means that your vessel is centered. So now that it's centered, you gotta keep it there while you're trimming. One of the ways that you can do this is by using the help of some clay. 
I like to take a piece of clay, doesn't matter if it's wedged or not, and hold the vessel down and press along the rim. I like to do this in about three places, just so it's nice and evenly supported from multiple directions. These little pieces of clay are called wads, and once you have all your wads in place, your bowl should be good to start trimming. So, it's important to know your tools before you start trimming. The two main tools that you'll be using when you start trimming are these guys. So these are called trimming tools, and they have beveled edges which cut into the clay as it's spinning on the wheel. Starting out, I like to start with this big guy. This is your pear-shaped trimming tool, and it's called that because it's kind of pear-shaped. So, just like in every other process of wheel throwing, your hand stability is very important. So you're, what, you're gonna wanna have your, your trimming arm at least anchored into your thigh. It's important to remember that trimming is a subtractive process, and once you remove clay from your vessel, it's not gonna go back on. So a little goes a long way in terms of pressure when you're starting out. I like to start by trimming into this big ugly foot that we got going on here. So I'm just lightly pressing and keeping my hand stable. My hand is stable and being unmoved by the vessel itself. As you can see, the clay comes off in these little ribbons and you don't really want them building up on your wedging tool because they can get in the way of wedging and then you can lose a chunk of your piece. When you're starting out, you want to make your foot's diameter about one half of the diameter of the opening of the bowl. You can use rulers for this, but you can also just use your eye. I like to just go until it seems right, until it seems about, like about half the width. I'm getting satisfied with this width of foot, so now I'm going to start cutting down into the clay. When throwing, I left a lot of material here, so I will be able to cut a good amount into this clay. The number one fear when trimming is that you're just gonna cut straight through your piece and you're gonna leave a big nasty hole that will render your piece useless. Given that your, your piece is about two days old at this point, it stinks when that happens. In order to avoid that, it helps to have studied your piece before putting it on the wheel giving it a good feel with your fingers and just gauging the thickness of the clay all the way from, from the lip to the foot. One way you can tell you're getting close to cutting through your piece is by tapping on it. You can either listen or push with your thumb or fingers to see how close you are. If it starts to give under your thumb, it's probably a good idea to stop trimming. I'm not yet at that point, so I'm going to keep cutting and give this bull the tallest foot that I can give it. Thank you. 
One of the mistakes that people make when trimming is having the wheel go very slow. This can feel nice sometimes because it feels like you have more control, but it means that the modifications you're doing with your, with your trimming tool aren't being applied to the whole thing. When you have it spinning at a good speed, you're not gonna get any unevenness in trimming. When trimming a foot, you wanna make sure that the, trip, the foot that you're trimming complements the entire bowl. Feet come in all different shapes and sizes, and ultimately the choice is yours for how the foot of your bowl will look. For this bowl, I'm trying to replicate the curvature on the exterior of the walls of the bowl in the foot. So what I've done is I've trimmed tight here to give it somewhat of a waist, and I'm just going to clean up this exterior part with this part of my trimming tool. Once I'm satisfied with how that looks, the next step involves evening out your foot. So you do that with your big, dip, big trimming tool and you just want to hold the trimming tool flat on the foot of the piece and go back and forth from the center to the tip of the foot. Sometimes doing this creates somewhat of a small lip on the end of your foot, but you can easily remove that after you've leveled the clay. So, now that I'm satisfied with how flat the foot is, I'm going to decide how thick I want the foot to be. A general rule of thumb for foot thickness is that you want the thickness of the foot to be about the same thickness as the rim of your bowl. To start with the foot, I like to create a line in the clay. It's really important to be very delicate during this process because your tool can catch and leave a huge streak in your foot and it'll be very frustrating. And believe me, it'll happen even if you're thinking about it. So just be prepared for that. Now that I've settled on a foot thickness, what I like to do is take the edge of my smaller trimming tool, put it in the deepest part of the foot so far and slowly make my way to the center of the foot. This is commonly the least dry part of the vessel at this point, so you're more likely to get clay that sticks to your wedging tool. But you just want to pull away clay a little bit at a time getting rid of all this stuff in your wedging tool. And you want to be really careful. One thing you're going to run into is these little pieces of clay, and these pieces of clay are called burrs. These will always show up when you're trimming your foot, and it's good to know when to just stop your, the spinning of your wheel and remove them.
When you're starting out, you want to try and make your foot as perpendicular to the surface it will eventually be resting on as possible. This means creating an interior that is straight up. Although, like, a, like anything with this process, it's your choice how you would like this foot to look. Since I want to make this foot a little bit taller, I'm just very gently cutting with the side of this trimming tool into the interior, interior wall of the foot. When deciding on depth for your foot, it helps to look at the height of the exterior of the bowl connecting to the foot. Something that's really attractive is when you have the exterior of the bowl and the interior of the foot coming to roughly the same height. This is just very pleasing, visually pleasing. And I'm noticing that my foot is now a little bit deeper than the exterior of my bowl, so I'm just going to make adjustments to the wall of the clay. Turn back to the interior of the foot and start to smooth it out. One of the ways to remove the bears is by just lightly placing your tool into the foot so that you're not cutting and the glaze, as, as the bowl spins, it just naturally sticks to your tool. I do a few more cuts, smooth out the appearance. of this foot. When you're finishing up trimming your, trimming your foot, it'll help you in the long term to smooth out the edge of the foot. Leaving jagged edges on any part of your clay vessel will result in very sharp edges that are easily chipped after the piece has been bisked and glazed. One of the ways you can smooth these, these rims out is just by pressing your finger to the rim. And as you can see, no longer is this a hard, sharp edge. It is now a smooth, soft curve that won't cut you. It also can help 
If you're finding that you have a lot of uh, lines from your trimming tools, it can help to just run your finger along the inside too. Because this smooths out any harsh, rough lines that you may have. Then once you're satisfied with your foot, another important step is your signature. You always want to make sure that you sign your pieces because even though you think you may have produced a one-of-a-kind piece, after it gets put through the kiln and turned into bisqueware, it can be really difficult to differentiate your piece from other people's. So, what's nice about a signature is that you can get creative. You can literally make it anything you want. And now that you have your piece signed, you can remove these wads of clay. Depending on how strong your piece is, I sometimes just like to wiggle it around and it just naturally creates space and then you can pull your piece. Sometimes while the piece is up in contact with these wads you have here, um, it can leave marks on the rim of your vessel. If that happens, you can easily take your sponge and just smooth those places out. Because the clay is still in the leather hard stage, there's still a lot of flexibility in terms of surface level appearance. And if you don't treat these, these areas now, at this point. Once it becomes bone dry or is bisqued, a lot of these areas will be a lot more difficult to clean up. You'll have to sand, which takes much longer than just using your sponge. So there we have it. Here's the bowl. Look at that foot. <laughs> Thanks for coming along with me today and getting a little bit messy. I hope you're leaving this video as excited about clay as I am every day. Like I said earlier, I don't think there's anything cooler that you could be doing with your time. Here are some parting words of advice from Professor Benson. You can only learn through failing, and you can only fail through trying. They will, they'll find their successes, but you do have to work for it. Every step along the way um, is progress. And so there's progress within every person's journey. And that's what I try to look at. The more you do, the better you get. You'll hear me say that over and over again. But it's really true. Um, we also have sheets next door. Exactly. <laughs> My advice, stay curious, ask questions, and have fun. Also, don't take yourself too seriously. All right guys, peace. <laughs>
Should we start over? Yeah. <laughs>